So sometimes a crown fracture will extend below the gum line and involve the root surface. This is called a crown root fracture. It includes enamel, dentin, and cementum with the loss of tooth structure and possibly exposed pulp tissue. There are two possible types of crown root fractures, uncomplicated and complicated. This is a fracture that involves enamel, dentin, and cementum with loss of tooth structure without exposed pulp. Hopefully by now you're seeing that there's a trend here. When we say something is uncomplicated, that means there's no pulp exposure. And when we say something is complicated, there is a pulp exposure. So with this uncomplicated crown root fracture, we do not have pulp exposure, but you do not always know this right away. You do not always know right away if the fracture is a crown root fracture or just a crown fracture. As always, make sure you do pulp testing to the tooth to determine the baseline for the pulp. Anytime you have a patient come in with a crown fracture, you really need to determine the extent of the fracture. Many times this entails removing or trying to separate the fractured segment from the remaining tooth structure. If this is uncomfortable for the patient, you may need to administer anesthesia first before removing the fractured segment. The fractured segment always needs to be removed. There is no way you can adequately assess the injury and no way you can possibly treat the tooth appropriately without removing the fractured segment. Another thing to consider is when you have a fracture that extends to the root surface. You typically have a large fracture and may have lots of tooth structure missing. Many of these teeth will require buildups and possibly crowns to best treat and restore the tooth. Even with a healthy, non-exposed pulp, you need to consider what it will take to restore the tooth. Are you thinking the fracture can be restored adequately with a direct restorative material? Or perhaps it can be restored with a partial coverage indirect restoration, such as an onlay. With more conservative restorations, elective root canal therapy may not be needed. Uh, if, however, a larger part of the tooth is missing and a buildup and crown will be required, sometimes doing elective endodontics and using the pulp chamber for retention of the core, or in some cases just placing a post and core may be necessary. When you are determining restorability, consider the possibility of doing an elective root canal procedure if you think it will help or benefit the restoration of the tooth. Radiographs for this type of injury include one occlusal and two periapical radiographs, from the mesial and distal. A CBCT could be helpful to determine the extent of the fracture prior to removing any fractured pieces of the tooth. At some point, you will want to remove the fractured portion of the tooth if it is still present. You have to do this at some point and the correct diagnosis and decision on treatment cannot really be completed until this step is finished. So the treatment of the crown root fracture really depends on the extent and the size of the fracture. If the extent of the fracture is clearly visible and can be isolated and well exposed, in many cases it can be restored without any other treatment. You can imagine that a fracture below the gingival margin could be challenging to restore. A healthy sulcus is one to three millimeters and terminates with a junctional epithelium. A restoration margin that extends no more than 0.5 to one millimeter into the sulcus may not have prolonged inflammation, but it very well could and the possibility of biologic width invasion needs to be considered and factored into the treatment options. A rule of thumb that I live by is if I cannot get a band around a tooth, then I cannot restore the tooth. If a direct restoration is not an option due to a fracture that extends too far subgingively, then a crown lengthening procedure may be necessary. If the size of the fracture is large and a larger portion of the remaining clinical crown is missing, then a buildup may be necessary. If the tooth requires a crown to restore the appearance, the shape, and the function of the tooth, it may make more sense to consider elective root canal therapy. The trauma guide mentions things like endodontic therapy, ortho extrusion, surgical extrusion. With a non-complicated crown fracture, this type of treatment will usually not be necessary. It is usually with cases of fracture that lack feral and adequate supporting tooth structure where you would consider things like ortho extrusion or surgical uh, extrusion as an option. Although if a non-complicated fracture was at such an angle that it caused the base of the fracture to be deep subgingially, then it's possible that restoring this tooth could be very challenging and require you to consider these options. Most of the time, if the tooth is fractured that bad, then the fracture would have most likely involved the pulp as well.
I personally have never considered surgical extrusion as a serious option and have never seen it done. Um, and it certainly is not a good option for preserving pulp vitality and would not be something I would routinely consider. If you have a fracture that is so deep that restoring the tooth seems hopeless or maybe questionable uh, with a potential poor prognosis, then you may need to uh, consider taking the tooth out, just extracting it. Before removal of the tooth, it may not be a bad idea to have a serious conversation with the patient about replacement options. If you're considering an implant, there are various things to consider. Uh, if the patient intends to get an implant soon, then the tooth could most likely be removed with very little consequence, so long as the buccal plate is mostly intact after the extraction. If, however, the patient is considering an implant but hasn't fully committed to the idea, or if they think it may be a while before they can do an implant, you may want to consider options that would preserve the remaining bone and alveolar ridge. You could also decoronate the tooth and submerge the remaining uh, root before implant treatment. Uh, this would help preserve the bone until the patient decides what to do or when they decide to pursue additional treatment. Of course, uh, removal of the tooth risks socket preservation is also a valid option if necessary. In many cases, if a patient presents with a non-complicated crown root fracture, you will spend a great deal of time gathering data and diagnosing. Depending on the rest of the mouth and the oral condition, there could be a variety of treatment options to consider, and this decision could not only overwhelm the patient, but could overwhelm you as well. In an emergency, you could elect to rebond the fractured tooth fragment and reappoint the patient soon to discuss options and to perform the treatment. Alternatively, to bonding the fragment back onto the tooth, you could also consider a temporary restoration to seal the dentin and to minimize sensitivity. Literature suggests that the prognosis and the outcome are not drastically altered if the patient receives definitive treatment within the first two weeks of the injury. In the guide, you will find the patient instructions and follow-up recommendations. Follow-up is the same as we have seen with crown fractures with reval at six to eight weeks and at one year. Pending no issues with the pulp at follow-up appointments, no further treatment is required. Keep in mind that the follow-up for a non-complicated crown root fracture is really heavily dependent on what treatment is rendered. In this guide, we listed six treatment scenarios that could be considered. Some of those options will have more or less follow-up due to the treatment that is chosen. This injury involves the enamel, dentin, and cementum with a loss of tooth structure and exposed pulp. For this injury, you will want to get one occlusal radiograph and at least two periapical radiographs from the mesial and distal. As with uncomplicated crown root fractures, the extent of the fracture should be determined. And this will certainly need to be something you know to help treatment plan. With complicated crown root fractures, more times than not, the tooth will receive a huge restoration or crown as the final restoration. With the pulp already exposed and the need for an extensive restoration, it makes a heck of a lot of sense to just consider root canal therapy as part of the treatment. Also, depending on the amount of tooth structure that was fractured, a post and core may be necessary. A partial pulpotomy may be considered and be more successful if the roots are immature and not completely formed. As far as treatment options, you will notice in the guide that there are treatment options uh, that are the, basically the same as uncomplicated crown root fractures. Just keep in mind that with the complicated crown root fracture, the likelihood of needing root canal therapy is way higher. The patient instructions and follow-up are exactly the same as for uncomplicated, uh, but again, will also vary depending on the treatment that is rendered. So as we wrap up this section, what are some of the critical takeaways? With both types of crown root fractures, it is critical that the extent of the fracture is explored. Administering anesthesia and removing the mobile or loose tooth fragment has always been my method of choice. With the broken fragment removed, the remaining tooth structure can be visualized and the diagnosis can be completed. Keep in mind that when the fracture is deeper and more subgingival, the more complex the treatment is going to be and restoring the tooth is going to be more questionable. Uh, this is when you will need to start thinking about things like crown lengthening, ortho extrusion, or extraction. Fractures that are more equigingival or slightly subgingival are more favorable and may not require a lot of additional treatment on top of the final restoration. There are a lot of ways to restore teeth and that is really more information than we could cover here in this course.
All right, next we will discuss root fractures.